call the uh, Whitman Middle School Building Committee meeting to order at uh, 431, using my eyesight, uh, on the 25th. As we start every meeting, if you could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'd like to remind everyone this meeting's being recorded uh, for airing at a later time, uh, posting, and for whatever use people could think of at a later time or date. I didn't get those. Could you Sorry. Meeting minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes that were submitted? We can take them one at a time, starting with January 6, 22. I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Or abstaining? Okay, so unanimous there, Michelle. Uh, October 21st, 21. Entertain the motion to approve? Second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Fred, who motioned and who seconded? Lincoln motioned, Beth seconded. Thank you. No worries. And it was unanimous. Ten eighteen twenty one. I'd entertain that motion. So moved, screw. Second. Second. Okay. Did you get that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Uh, 921-21. So moved. Stafford. Second. Screw. Okay. All in favor? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I missed it. I was going to add up. I was looking it up. In. On 921, uh, there is a correction. I, I misspoke. Uh, it's about the ban. Uh, I believe uh, there was some confusion about that, and I said we were taking out a free cash and ended up being a ban. So it, it was said in the meeting, but I, uh, if we could add a correction that it is uh, now a ban. Okay, so I motion to amend. Motion to amend. Made and second. All in favor? Ernie, you're in favor? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, opposed and abstaining? None. Unanimous. Now I entertain a motion to Fred, approve as a clarification, just for people watching, can you just, can you explain what a ban is? People might not know at all what okay. a ban is. Uh, and I'm going to actually get the, one of the financial experts on the panel, <laughs> either uh, Lincoln or John, to uh, <laughs> completely <laughs> describe it. So a ban is a bond anticipation note, and that is a, uh, an authorization, it's, it is a borrowing in anticipation, a short-term borrowing in anticipation for a long-term borrowing later on, typically 20 or 30 years. Okay, so, the, so basically we borrow the money and then it just gets rolled into the big picture. That's correct. After the fact. And it allows you to later borrow a lesser amount if the project came in under budget. All right, sufficient, Jeff? Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, did we... Did we uh, we voted to approve as amended, correct? No. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I entertain the motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second, screwed. Okay, well, Mr. Lamatina moved. Mr. Screwed second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, the 14th of September, 21. I believe somebody was going to amend yeah. that. I'm going to make him uh, amend that we have the date that the talk held on September 14th, 2021, versus uh, what it says is 2020. Okay, so typographical error. Second, screw him. Screw him, second. All those in favor of amending? Bottom. Okay, unanimous. Uh, entertain a motion to approve as amended. So moved, screw him. Second, seven. Okay, all in favor? Uh, August 24th, 21. Entertain a motion to approve. 
So moved. Uh, moved by Lincoln. Second, Scriven. Second by Mr. Scriven. All in favor? Yeah. That's right. And that's unanimous. What's the date of that one again? Uh, 24. Okay. Of August. Uh, and now August 4th, 21, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Scriven. I have a second, and a second by Mr. Lamatina. Get that, Michelle. All those in favor? Opposed? And abstaining. So it was yeah. unanimous with Ms. Stafford abstaining. All right, that, that takes us to uh, Collier's International Project Leaders presentation and report. Before we get into that, uh, everyone received a copy of the project manager's contract uh, in your packets. The date on the contract was slightly different. Uh, the revision date that Collier's used originally uh, that they took off of the MSBA website uh, had showed a revision date of 2010 from November 29th. Uh, MSBA just said, hey, you got to you know, for the rest of your pages, other than page one, you need to use the 115.21 revision. The difference is in 8.1.5, uh, MBE, WBE, and Workforce Participation Compliance Monitoring, all phases. The owner's project manager uh, shall monitor and report on the designers and contractors or CM at risks compliance at MBE slash WEBE requirements. That is what was in the original 2010 version. The 2021 version, the verbiage, as you all have, reads, the owner's project manager shall monitor and report on the designers and contractors or CM at risks compliance with MBE slash WBE requirements as set forth in Mass General Law Chapter 7C, uh, Section 6, and Mass General Law Chapter 7, Section 61. That's A. And then B, the owner's project manager shall monitor and report on the designers and contractors or CM at risk compliance with Commonwealth's workforce participation requirements set forth in Mass General Laws Chapter 149, Section 44A, uh, Paragraph 2, small letter G. So basically they give Collier's more work to do uh, contractually. And Collier's I believe is fine with doing that extra work. So we don't have an issue. But I wanted the committee to know that there was that slight difference as MSBA had asked us to insert that as part of the contract. Uh, any questions? Mr. Gellman. Um, the date on the page one is January 4th, but we just got a basically a new contract. Is this signature page really valid in a contract? According to MSBA, I believe it is. That they said, you know, use page one, use your contract, you know, the signature page is fine. Just replace the other pages. That was their... I'm, I'm, I'm no lawyer, don't get me wrong, but they signed a totally different, they signed a contract that isn't the same. I mean, it just, to me, it would make sense that it gets re-signed with the proper dates and everything because it, it's clear on it, it's a different contract. Yep. It says right down on the bottom, it's a different date. I just, I don't know, I mean, it just. We can have them initial that page or sign that page. Yeah, I mean, just something uh, legal. And I don't believe there'll be an issue with them doing it. They're aware of uh, what MSBA had right. asked, so that shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. So I, my, I don't want to speak for you folks, but. Not a problem. Any more questions? And MSBA sort of let us know at the last minute too, so a little bit on the crazy side on that. Uh, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to the folks from Collier's. If you could reintroduce yourself to the committee, and I don't know if we should go around in the committee real quick and uh, give a quick introduction. Sure. So thank you, very happy to be here. Uh, Ken Gayet, Senior Director with College Project Leaders. I've been with the firm for about 11 years. Uh, architect by trade, project manager by choice. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, 
and a very, very successful project with you all. Hi, John Bates, project manager with Collier's, uh, registered architect, media credit professional. Uh, and it's, uh, it's nice to be back here. It was nice to meet you at the interview, and it's good to see you all. Um, Mr. Galvin, if you could just start. Hi, I'm John Galvin. I'm John Stanbrook, I'm uh, director of business and finance. Mr. Essen? Don Essen, I'm uh, on the committee. Rich Falkenen, town resident. Lincoln Heinemann, the uh, town administrator for the town of Boyd Mitch. Good to see you folks again. Uh, Fred Small, as you know. Uh, Randy Lamatina, selectman, town of Whitman. Beth Stafford, school committee. Uh, Chris Gervin, vice chair of school committee. Crystal Regan, uh, teacher at Whitman Middle. Ernie Sandlin, facility manager. George Morrow, assistant superintendent. Paul DePray, the principal at Whitman Middle. Jeff Simak, superintendent. Great. All right, well, thank you all very much. If uh, through the chair, if it's okay, I think we'd like to try to flip those two agenda items if possible and go through the schedule first since that was just distributed out to everybody. The most recent schedule. Uh, minor, minor revisions to the schedule. Again, it did not impact any of the critical dates. Uh, it has to do with a couple of uh, minor revisions that the MSBA sent us. And obviously, the schedule that we had before that you all saw was based on us coming board in December. So there was a month lag there. So we've adjusted for that now in this schedule. And what I want you to I want to point your attention to is the the, the the three modules essentially that we're going to be going through in this phase. So the feasibility study agreement, as you can see at the top of the schedule, shows a total duration of 30 months. And that was based on your April 15th invitation into the core building program with the MSBA. So we essentially have until October of 2023 to get these four modules complete, which are module two, which is forming the team, module three, which is feasibility, four, schematic design, and five is funding the project. Our immediate focus is to finalize module two. So you've already taken care of part of that. You brought the OPM on board. Now module two, the balance of it is getting the design team on board. It's again, MSBA, it's a very prescriptive process. There are certain boxes that we have to check. That's all outlined in this schedule, in this module two, um, these module two tasks that you see here that are highlighted in, in yellow. And basically what this is telling us is, is how we're gonna get from today all the way through to have a designer on board. The first step of the process, which we sent out last week, was to get a draft request for services out to the committee for review. That's essentially what's gonna get sent to the MSBA, and then it'll get put out on the street, and that's what's gonna solicit the design teams to come on board and submit qualifications, which you will then shortlist, along with the designer selection panel at the MSBA, and we'll come to an agreement on who's going to get interviewed based on a shortlist, and then ultimately who's going to be the designer on board. The MSBA designer selection panel is the authority that's going to make that selection. However, this committee will have three individuals that can be part of that designer selection panel committee with the MSBA, and I'll go through that in a minute. But essentially right now, what we're outlining here is having the designer selection panel meetings, which are scheduled through the MSBA, and they happen at April 11th, April 19th, May 3rd, and May 17th. We're gonna use two of those four meetings for this particular project. And so what we're shooting for is April 11th to have the design selection panel to shortlist the firms for the interviews, and then the April 19th meeting to have the selected um, firm from the designer selection panel contract negotiation and then award a contract hopefully by that first week of May. So it's aggressive, but unfortunately with the schedule that we have and getting this feasibility study agreement done, we have got to be aggressive. And we've got to, and again, this is not unheard of to do it in this time frame. That's the next big milestone. That's what we have to be laser focused in right now is just getting the design team on board. And then once we're, we're set with them, then the cadence of what's gonna happen with this project is gonna increase exponentially as we start moving into that feasibility study agreement. So with that, the next thing, um, if there are any questions on the schedule so far? So 
And the next thing I wanted to just, just bring to your attention, and I'll put it up on the screen, is the designer selection panel procedures. We'll get this off to everybody. This is on MSBA's website. So again, there's, there's several members of the designer selection panel. Uh, they're all listed here in this, in this list. Um, we have basically the executive director, ex-official or his or her designee, three MSBA staff members, a public member selected by the executive director, and so on and so forth. They have, currently I think they have 13 members, and then there's three from this committee that will be part of that designer selection panel. And those three members that I highlight here have to comply with this section, which ultimately says, one of these members should be designated by the school committee, district school committee, or board of trustees of the eligible applicant. One individual shall be the superintendent of the schools, uh, ex officio, or his or her designee. And then the last one is one of whom shall be the chief executor officer of the city or town, ex officio, his or her designee, or in all other cases, a member of this building committee. So one of the things that we would like the committee to think about and talk about and hopefully be able at the next meeting to come back with are what you propose your three members are going to be. That doesn't mean that this committee won't have an opportunity to opine on whatever designers we get, but they're going to have to take that information back to the designer selection panel and basically speak on this committee's behalf. Any questions? Okay. And the last item we have on the agenda is the um, draft copy of the request for services for the designer. Again, a lot of this is boilerplate MSBA. Not much we can do to modify it similar to the OPM RFS. Uh, this is what's gonna go out on the street. We'll make sure again that the, the dates that we have in this RFS dovetail in with the dates we have in the schedule and what the MSBA has provided for some of their designer selection panel meeting dates. But essentially what this does is gives the same kind of background information that we have for the OPM selection, the OPM RFS, as far as the school history and, the, and discussing the district and then it talks about what the design team is going to be required to do for this feasibility study agreement. Um, none of that is able to be modified, obviously, because it's MSBA. So we're, we're just essentially going to be sending this copy to the MSBA first for their review and approval after you all have seen it. And then once they've gotten their comments back to us, we'll modify it, edit it, get it out to you all, and then submit it onto the street and get out next year. So right now we're looking to try to get this advertised and on the street by that February 23rd date that's noted on the RFS. I believe this went out to the committee last Wednesday? Yes, a draft copy, the same copy we're looking at now was distributed to the committee last week. Any questions? I have a quick question. I don't want to cut anyone off, though. Uh, will the RFS specifically state uh, the options that we're looking at? In other words, it'll look at the six through eight current configuration. So that's correct. I, I thought I saw it in. It's in here. It was sent out. Yeah. One of the things I will I will note on here is that we do as a matter of course. Um, and what we're going to want to make sure is also included in this other RFS is in addition to the enrollments that the MSBA has agreed to and the different grade configurations the MSBA has agreed to. As a matter of course, we're going to be looking at several different options during the feasibility study from a base repair of the building through additions, additions and renovations, new construction. One of the options that we like to put in the RFS is just again, to make sure in case it comes up as an option later on, is whether or not this committee chooses a new construction option. We want to make the model school available to you as another option if you so choose. So that's one of the 
kind of belt suspenders you put in the RFS to make sure that's an additional option on top of everything else that we're going to be doing. Uh, just to give you another another arrow in the quiver um, when it's time to make a decision on the, on the building going forward. Where is the model school? So there's several. They're all noted on the MSBA's website. It's going to depend on which enrollment we ultimately choose and which grade configuration ultimately gets, choose, gets chosen. And then based on that, we, we decide, the committee decides, yes, we want to do new construction. Then we can have a conversation with the MSBA. We have to be invited into that model school program. But we have to note it in the RFS, otherwise that option is off the table. So we just want to make sure it's in there. And, and we'll, as we get closer to that time, we'll go through all those models with you and show you the ones that are appropriate for this project. Anybody else have any questions? I've got a question just on that. So this school right here, when it was first built, if you go to all the surrounding towns, they're almost all very similar to this one. So is that the type of program we you're talking about, that you have a specific type of school and they already have a significant amount of you know, work done to on the design part of it and you kind of borrow that, would that be a savings or would that be an addition? Yeah, so typically what the, the model school program, uh, the MSBA invites certain schools into that model school program and then it offers it up to other districts to use one of those models if they prefer. What it does is it does cut down on your design time, which obviously saves money. On the construction cost, it's not much of a savings if a savings at all because Construction is construction, but what it does do is it gets you in the ground quicker, which obviously will save money on escalation. So you save money on design time and escalation. It cuts about six to eight months out of the design time by going with the model school. There used to be incentive points the MSBA would, would um, authorize as part of that. Um, they've gotten away with the incentive points, but there still is an inherent incentive based on the schedule, um, the quicker schedule. How much leeway do you have to modify a model school? Typically, you're looking at modifying classroom wings, the core areas, cafeteria, gymnasium, administration, auditorium if it's, if it's a high school, a minor auditorium if it's a middle school. You can't really typically modify those. Those are kind of set where they are, which is why at times it can be a benefit for districts that have a lower enrollment, but you get a larger auditorium or a larger gymnasium or a larger cafeteria based on the model. Um, and then the, the classrooms can just be configured, the wing can sometimes be configured differently. You can add classrooms, you can take classrooms away depending on the enrollment, that type of thing. But really the sizes, again, the MSBA has very specific sizes for their spaces on top of it. So there's not a lot that can be modified other than the classroom. What about green uh, LEED certified? Can you go yeah. to a different standard? So typically they're all silver, LEED silver projects, and you can always enhance that if you choose um, by doing other things to try to get you more points, to get you to gold or platinum, or to become net zero, um, that you can always go that route and add to it. Um, whether the MSP will participate in it, we'll, we'll have to determine it in a future date, but Absolutely. Great, thank you. Anybody have anything else for Colliers? Uh, is everyone clear on the steps and what our next steps are as far as that goes? I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. The selection process. Um, I understand that the three um, persons who are going to be involved in uh, narrowing it down, I guess is that, um, it, you know, that's basically what happened when we selected you. Um, so after that, it sounds like then we're really not involved in um, the final decision. It's really that selection group and the MSBA. So we as a whole board don't have a say, so to speak? Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, so let me kind of expand on that a little bit because there is there's a couple of nuances that I want to make sure everybody understands. So this committee will be allowed to take a look at all the qualifications. 
be allowed to opine on the qualifications amongst ourselves and be able to essentially give the three members of this committee that's going up to the DSP marching orders. This is our preferred option. Here's number two and here's number three. Typically, the MSBA design selection panel will defer to the committee's three members and will weigh that very, very heavily on what they want for the architects. This committee is not allowed to make a decision on who's going to be selected, but they are allowed to opine on it and be able to tell the three members that are going to the DSP on what their preference is. And, and from what I can tell, there is the same scoring criteria in this um, process as there was in when we hired you. Well, we had scores and everything had to be weighed, and that doesn't exist because I didn't see any of that in here. That's true. Yeah, it's, 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 a different, it's a different, slightly different process. There is a lot more, you know, get members of that designer selection panel, and you've got some stronger personalities on that panel that might try to sway other voters. So it's really important that the designer selection panel members from this committee are all on the same page. And what we typically do is as these meetings are going on, and they've been all remote lately, uh, but even if they're in person, we'll be texting the three members. John and I will be texting the three members saying, okay, we'll be keeping tallies on who's voting for who and say, okay, you've got to vote for this person because second place doesn't make a difference when you're voting on who gets kicked out from first at that time. So we have to be very positive of that. And then we'll say, you know, you've got to say something now in order to sway this voter because we've been through it, many times we've been through it, and make sure we can that we're ultimately getting who you want. All right, thank you. So the, there are experiences where you, where they, you don't, right? The, the MSBA has on occasion selected for you, so to speak. Yeah, so they, they don't want to say this, but there are there are times where there's been designers that have put in submissions for qualifications that haven't been awarded a project in a long time that the MSBA, certain members of the design selection panel will want to push that work to that person in that time. And that may work in your favor if you like them, but if you don't, then you want to make sure that they, they understand that. Anything further? Next meeting dates, and I'm going to defer to you folks as far as, uh, you know, when do we need to get together again to hit whatever benchmark? You know, I know we have one coming up on the 3rd of February. Do we need to meet prior to that? I wouldn't think we need to be prior, prior to the 3rd, and, and honestly, as we're going forward, um, especially when the design team comes on board, it might be beneficial to schedule bi-weekly building committee meetings and then take one away if we don't need one. We need to stretch time out for the architect to let some design cook or something like that in between meetings. Uh, but that would be our, our recommendation, is bi-weekly for now, and then, and then after that we can look at whether or not it should go longer. But we will be absolutely providing much more information than tonight as we said more before, especially when the design is on board. So, we have to we, vote on this, correct? Yeah. Uh, we don't have to vote on this, correct? On the RFS? RFS? You can just give us, tell us, if, if there's no revisions, then we can, we'll just submit it as is. Yeah, I'm going to ask for a motion. So moved, Beth. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on the RFS or any questions? All in favor of uh, call, oh, I'm sorry. No. Oh, all in favor of uh, Collier's uh, sending this to MSBA as presented. And unanimous. That works. As far as that goes. So you would suggest we meet the week after next, or is that too soon with the third date? That would be the eighth. That would be the eighth. I think that's I think that's fine. Um, I think that would be good. Okay. All right. So, uh, do we want to post for every other week for right now? I think that would be beneficial, just so people can lock in into their. And so, uh, just, just letting you know that after the eighth, the every other week falls on February break. So I would go the eighth, and then the third, the not every other week, the week okay. of the. 22nd. March 1st. 
Or do we want to skip the 8th and go the following week and then go every other? I would go the 15th, maybe. You know? Yeah. What do you think, guys? The 15th, the next meeting, and then we'll go every other, we'll be on the cycle. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay, so we'll do it that way. And Michelle, you can handle, you know, we'll post out for, what, six months? We'll give you, we'll give you some agenda items that'll be enough to All right. One last thing. How long does the EMF uh, have to turn around the request for services? How long typically will they take to turn this around? I'm sorry, I'm here. How long will the MSBA turn this around? How long will it take them to turn this around? Usually it's, it's very quickly, but they have 10 days, I believe, is what they have. That may play into our next timeline. I mean, if we're going to meet on the 8th, what are we really going to meet on? Well, we're going to meet on the 15th. We're going to go a week later. Okay. Will we have much to talk about? Because we'll probably just have this return that we're submitting to them. And then submitting that advertisement. That's it. Right. But uh, at that point, we want to know who the design selection panel members of the committee will be. Because we're going to have to notify the okay. and get that all right away as well. So, we'll have some work to do. I don't anticipate the meetings being long, but uh, hopefully uh, quick and constructive and that would be nice. Can, can you just go over the uh, designer selection committee uh, makeup again? Sure. One school committee member, the superintendent, and... Right, superintendent or their designee, and then um, the chief executive officer, so um, selectman, uh, town administrator, or their designee, and if they don't have a designee, then a member of the, of the building committee could act in that capacity. Thanks. Okay. Have that on the agenda for the 15th, and we'll make our uh, decisions uh, as far as that goes. Now, the school now does the school committee have to be the awarding authority, or is it the building committee? There'll be the appointing authority. The building, the building committee. Okay. What about for the school committee member? We have a school, couple of school building committee members on the building committee, correct? Right. Yeah. We have there's right. three of us, so. Yeah. Yeah. Then you would just pull from that. All right. Cool. That works. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything, or I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Screw. Um, Mr. Lamatina, motion. Mr. Screw, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, no one wants to stay here all night. <laughs> Thank you all.